guys, this is Duncan here. Welcome back to the Overwatch League Roundup 2020 Team of Week 29. So yesterday we went through the results of Week 29. It has been rather interesting. We haven't seen all the teams, so we're going to see some new people perhaps come into this last regular season Team of the Week for this year. Yeah, it is the last one. It won't be the last Team of the Week, but it's the regular last Team of the Week, and... Uh, it's it's been a ride i actually have an excel document of all of the team of the weeks all of the picks and so i might do if you want if you guys want to see it i'll do a video going through all of the picks across all of the weeks of this regular season if you would really like it and i actually have the total numbers for all of the all of the teams in terms of how many team of the week picks they've had and i'm sure that will be very very interesting uh for you guys to find out uh, you can work it out if you were to do the do the do the dirty work of going through all the videos. Anyway, but besides that, we have got week twenty nine to go through, and we've seen a meta sort of develop. We've seen Mercy come back quite majorly with uh with her damage boost and with her with her healing output as well. Alongside the Ash, she's pretty darn good right now. Alongside either an Anna or other types of of flex support, but. We are also seeing a lot of dive tanks, and we're also mainly seeing Sombra Ash in the DPS. Uh, will that change going into the playoffs? We will see. That's that's a discussion for another video. I think I'm thinking Sombra and Ash, might, or especially Sombra, might be quite an interesting one. But for week 29, we're going to start off with our main support, and most of the time this has been occupied by a, by a Mercy, and I am going to give this to Animo. I think. Animo has been pretty darn good for the New York Excelsior this week. They featured one once this week against the London Spitfire. And I think Animo was on point with his Mercy play. I really, really do think that. Uh, I want to give honourable mentions to IDK and Paintbrush. I think they also had really, really good displays this week. But Animo, damage boosts were on point. Really, really good. Enabling the rest of the NYXL to really, really flourish with their damage output and stuff like that. Reses. Very, very rarely caught out with reses. Very rarely. Reses were really good, got real value. And positioning was also really, really good for Animo. Using that Guardian Angel to make sure that they stay out of danger. Sometimes I saw Jonak out of position. Animo would go in, try and heal. Jonak would die, but Animo would be able to get straight back out again with the link up to his main tanks, uh, his main tank or his DPS. He's very survivable. And I think Animo has had a really, really good week. And this is the first time Animo has featured since week 5. Uh, something like that. Uh, we don't really see a massive amount of supports from NYXL this season, to be quite honest. They've been consistent, but they haven't been pop-off. And I think I think Animo really does deserve this. So that's, uh, that's where I'm going to put it for this one. But IDK and Paintbrush did do really well as well. So now we are moving on to our flex support, and this time around it is once again going to be Violet out of San Francisco Shock. Uh, San Francisco Shock got two good wins this week against Washington Justice and a tight one against Atlanta Rain. But I think Violet did really well this weekend. Uh, Violet is a flashy player, isn't he? He kind of like pops off. He's not... I don't want to say he's not consistent because he is consistent. But he's more of a pop-off sort of player, more of the Jonak sort of style of Zen and stuff like that and Anna that we, we've seen before, rather than the more consistent type you might see from perhaps Alarm or something like that. So Violet, I think he got loads of damage output. He's really consistent on the Anna, but he's really good on the Zen. Really good on the Zen. Transcendences were very decent. Um, his ult usage was pretty good. Uh, his ability uses is also pretty good, and his positioning is on point as per usual. Keeping himself safe at all times. And I think he molds into this San Francisco shot roster very, very well. And I think he's proved this weekend how powerful he can be on the right picks in that back line, dealing out damage like a DPS can. And... He, often, he really does remind me of, of a New Age sort of Jonak in some respects, where Jonak has kind of kind of slackened off slightly, we might say. Uh, Violet has kind of picked up that star sort of flashy flex support uh, sort of role in the league. 
that we don't see a massive amount. We see it sometimes from like Kareev or someone like that. But at the at the very highest end of the league, it's it's generally Violet. It's either Violet or Alarm. But I think Violet really deserves this slot this week, so I will be giving it to him. We are going to move on to our off tank. And off tank is a little bit interesting this week because we're going to see a player that has never actually featured in this role this season. Um, so yeah, this is a new player to team of the week. Pretty pog. Um, I'm going to give honorable mentions first of all to Space. Space was in team of the week last week and he's not far off it again this week. Space is performing absolutely fantastically for the, for the LA, LA Gladiators right now. And honestly, he looks like one of their best players alongside Birdring. And he's performing at a, at a level that puts him on par with some of the best off tanks in the league. So, you know, when we talk about best off, length, off tanks in the league, we're talking about Void. We're talking about Choi Hyobin. We're talking about Fury or Poco. Uh, sometimes Krong, depending on his pick. But um, I really think Space is up there right now. Space gets great value on D.Va. He's also got a really good Zarya, although we've seen the Gladiators swap in Mirror on the Zarya. But his Sigma is also darn good darn good and it proves the flexibility that some off tanks <coughs> um haven't got so i think space is really stepping up to the plate right now but it's not him i want to give an honorable mention to Choi Hyobin. i think Choi hyoban has been great this week for the san francisco shock uh Choi Hyobin is very consistent he always is on that off tank um he's one of the uh mvp award candidates and he really is a really fantastic off tank and he is he is going to be consistently debated as one of the best off tanks in the world if not the best off tank in the world but this week it's gonna go to note of the dallas fuel ah, it's not very often we mention a dallas fuel player in fact actually uh talking about that excel spreadsheet there's only been one other dallas fuel player in the team of the week for this entire season so note gets that second dallas fuel um so note I think has been uh, Dallas feel like they got a 3-1 against Toronto and they lost 3-1 to Paris but their 3-1 against Paris it was a good look from Dallas it was a loss but Paris are the third best team in North America when we look at Dallas they are not anywhere near the third best team in America but no really held his own against Hanbin and he outplayed Nevix a lot of the time. He was getting great value. He was getting a lot of picks. A lot of picks. You'll see no in the in the kill feed quite a bit. As much as you might even see someone like uh, someone like Doha or Onigod. And I think that's invaluable to the Dallas Fuel right now. I think he really, really made a big, big difference uh, for the Dallas Fuel, especially in that Toronto match, because I think at times he stopped Toronto coming back into it. He got a big diva bomb um, on Busan that got both supports. He's got actually multiple good big diva bombs across the entire series during that one because I think Note is getting a lot of value, and a lot of value, and he's always been a fairly consistent main tank. We can uh, off tank, I should say. We can go back to the days when he was at Boston Uprising alongside uh, his partner Gamsu, uh, and they went unbeaten during stage three of the inaugural season, going all the way that all the way back there. Note is a good off tank, and he can he's never been quite able to push the echelon to the top off tanks. But I really think he got a lot of value out of that Diva pick, especially this week. I think he's up and down on other picks, but we have seen so much Diva. So much Diva this week. Um, which is a change really for the most of the season where we've seen a lot of Sigma. So I think Note deserves this spot, but nothing to take away from Space and Choi Hoban, who have been fantastic this week as well. Now we move on to our main tank, and again, I want to give Gamsu a mention. I think Gamsu is really improving for the Dallas Fuel. Uh, it's really starting to click now alongside Note, and it's giving the Dallas Fuel sort of a stable platform to build off of. And I think Gamsu is getting a lot of value uh, from, from the nanos when he was nano boosted and when he was primal raging and going in, getting out. Generally, Gamsu was fairly good. Um, Dreamer of the Los Angeles Valiant, I think he was getting crazy value with his uh, Primal Rages, which is something we're seeing more and more now with people picking up the Winston and picking up the Dive. We're seeing a lot of teams kind of now develop their Winston players into getting a lot of value out of their Primal Rages. We saw this with London Spitfire and JMac, who I have criticised a lot 
over past weeks for not getting anything done on the on the Winston pick. This week, he was getting stuff done. So we can see that the main tanks are learning to get back into the groove of that Winston play that hasn't been around for quite a while. Um, and I think I think Dream is really, really doing this as well and it's getting a lot of value. But when you talk about top tier Winston play, we generally go to the boys in pink and we generally go to Gujue. And this is where it's going to go for this week. I think Gujue is fantastic. He is one of the best Winston players in the world, in my opinion. And him alongside QOQ against Soul Dynasty, they were getting so much more value than Gesture and To You. Uh, it was absolutely bonkers. Gujue, you know when he goes in, he's going to get a, a ton of value. Whether it's building Alt Charge to a Primal Rage, whether it's popping a Primal Rage and getting kills off of it, which generally Gujue does, but also you know that Gujue has got that perfect, perfect balance, which is crucial to a Winston player. He's got the perfect balance of going in and getting out at the perfect times, and he's not feeding by dying after going in. He's not going in when he's low and then dying before he even gets to the place he's diving to. He's not making these questionable decisions. You can rely on Gujue's Winston to be fantastic, and it was against Soul Dynasty. He looked like the best Winston on the field. And he was against Gesture, who is known for his fantastic Winston play. Gesture is also known as one of the best Winstons in the world. So Gujue really marked, uh, stomped his authority on that match, and I was really impressed with it. So this is why it's going to go to Gujue. Uh, we are moving on to the DPS now, though. And Hitscan this week has been quite... Quite easy for me to pick. I'm not going to lie. So I want to give some mentions to Glister of the London Spitfire. Despite London losing both games this week, they were closer than they have been previously. And this is a lot of thanks to Glister because Glister has been popping off no end. Some of the shutdowns on Sombras that he has done this weekend have been phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal, especially against Sabiobi, against MYXL. I, I remember 180 flick, uh, headshot, dead. It's crazy. Uh, I was really impressed with Glister. Edison of the Atlanta Rain, I want to give him a shout. Even though Atlanta Rain have struggled this week, Edison has been the bright light for them. KSP have been popping off for the Los Angeles Valiant, but he kind of, he's, he's kind of a carry potential for the Valiant at times. It's really, really impressive the work KSB can get done. Birdring is in the form of his season right now. He is doing so darn good. So, so, so darn good. Really impressed with Birdring. He has taken a while to get used to life at the Los Angeles Gladiators after being at the London Spitfire and having a rough time at the end of his tenure there. But now he's really hitting the ground running and it is fantastic news for the Gladiators going into the playoffs. Birdring could be pivotal to how the Gladiators do in these playoffs, but it's not going to be any of them because it is going to go to Anz or Anson Sniper of the San Francisco Shock. He was dominating in the San Francisco Shock's matches this week and I cannot, I cannot express that enough. I really can't. He was the best sniper on the field. That's without a doubt. And some people may say he is limited to the sniper pick. We did see the McCree on Busan, but he was decent on the McCree as well. I don't think we can deny that. He's great on the Ash, he's great on the Widow. And he... There was some... Decay was getting value for the Washington Justice when they were playing against them, right? But Anz adapted his play and started punishing Decay. And Decay was getting less done. He does, he did the same against the Atlanta Reign. Edison was getting value and starts beating Edison in the Widow 1v1 duel. He starts shutting him down. And therefore the the sort of the pressure outlet for the Atlanta Reign was was closed. And so the pressure started to build and it boiled over. And that's what I sort of saw it as. And I think Anz adapted his play really well in these matches to shut down two very good hit scan sniper players in Edison and Decay to give San Francisco Shock two very good victories this weekend. So I think he really deserves this spot. And he's one of the best snipers we have in the league. I don't think we can argue that. So the last spot, I'm going to give an honorable mention to Shockwave of the Vancouver Titans. 
Um, he, again, has been great for them in their 3-0 victory over the Boston Uprising. But again, they did fall foul to the Valiant, 3-0. Uh, Shockwave is always the shining light for this Titan side, but I am going to give it to Architect. We have seen Architect of the Hangzhou Spark on Sombra a lot uh, during this weekend. An absolute ton. Uh, Sombra is really, really meta right now. Do I expect that to change in the playoffs? Probably not too much, actually. Um, so having a good Sombra player is pivotal. And him versus, versus his opponent on the Soul Dynasty... He was getting more value. He was building EMPs generally a lot faster. His EMP usage, he was getting more value out of his EMPs. More hacks. More people not able to use their abilities. Which is massive at that level of Overwatch. Absolutely massive. Architect really, really did have a fantastic match against the Soul Dynasty. And not only that. You see a lot of Sombra players use their Translocator, put it down, go in the back line, spray the back of tanks, spray the back of someone, get out. They've got their ult charge and they're happy. Architect wasn't happy. He was getting pick after pick after pick in the back line of Soul Dynasty. And it was winning fights for the Hangzhou Spark. Time after time. It was fantastic. And it really set up a stable footing for the Hangzhou Spark to dominate that match. And in the end they get the 3-0. And a lot of it is thanks to Architect and his play on that Sombra. I really, really believe that. He really really did well this week. And that's why I think I should give him this spot as ever. It is my opinion though, and so I do look forward to your opinions in the comments below. This week's Team of the Week, this last regular season Team of the Week, will be Animo, Violet, No, Gougeway, Anz, and Architect. A lot of A's. A lot of A's. Just noticed that. But, that's it. That's the, re that's the last regular season Team of the Week. We will be moving on to the playoffs very, very soon. There are a few Overwatch League roundups I have in mind. Before we hit the playoffs because we've got a little bit of break before then, but it is going to be super interesting and Oh, I can't wait new 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 patch new patch but Roadhog. Mm-mm. It's gonna be interesting But for now, thank you guys so much for this video if you'd like to give a like subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video See you then